Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography, where old friends and fans come together to BS, argue, occasionally agree, and discuss the musical artists. Each week, one of us selects an artist to bring to the panel for everyone to listen, discuss, and rank the studio albums. I'm Jason. With me is Bill. Oh, Jason's never going to let this go. Nope. And first time on the show, special guest, Sam. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. As you can see, Tim's not here. He'd rather go to two Metallica concerts this weekend than hang out with us. What a loser. So, it's October, my favorite time of the year. It's Halloween time. And I asked, movie time? Good movie time. I asked everybody to pick their Halloween spooky bands. Next week we're doing my pick, which is Alkaline Trio. Because, you know, that's a Halloween band. And after that, Tim picked the Cramps. Which, you know, is a Halloween band. But this week was Bill's pick, and he picked Paramore. Which is a debatable Halloween band, slash not really. So, initially, when we were talking about it, because last week we did MCR, I'm like, MCR, oh shit, like, Paramore, that was like the same stuff as MCR. I remember, you know, in middle school and high school and whatnot, just listening to them back to back. And yeah, so, real. I mean, here's the thing. It's also usually your high school homecoming and prom week and every or high school homecoming week, you know, and sometime in October, September. So just be able when you're going to that high school dance to listen to inevitably ten Paramore songs that you know are going to be played there. Give it a listen, see if those actually made any sense in the Paramore actual top songs. Wait, so that's your tie-in because there's a school dance and Paramore's played at a school dance that it's automatically a Halloween thing. I mean, that, by October. that by that standard, October. okay, October. By that standard, the Macarena is Halloween. October. Yeah, but that's just or one the Chicken song. Dance. That's just one song. The Green Day's Good Riddance. That's just one song. Okay, that doesn't. There, there's nothing spooky about Paramore. The only thing spooky about Paramore is the fan base. But I'll get to that. You got a point there. All right, so we're talking Paramore. Um, we're talking. Oh, I to actually come up with a spooky band. Oh, I guess we got to talk about our history slash relationship with the band. Um, I mean, I know who Paramore is. They were on Rock Band, Rock Band Two, I think. You know, they had some fun songs to play on drums on the plastic kit. But I was in my twenties. When this band was a big, almost 30s, so I that wasn't the target audience. You know, this was more my target audience, you know, some Britney. That's the real pop queen right there. So I never deep dived them. This is my first time hearing these records all the way through. So I guess I would be a Paramore virgin. Bill, what about so I guess, you? I say I'll go next here. Um, so obviously being younger, um, First album was released in 2005. That's when I was in second grade, I think. Jesus so, fucking Christ! So let's think. Like, I mean, all I mean, Paramore. Anyone who knows, there was live. It's yeah, they were big in the radio rotation between them, MCR, Green Day, Nickelback, All American Rejects. Like, it's that's what your radio rock rotation was on the pop radio. You know, from 2004 to 2008 ish, give or take. Right, that it was a heavy dosage of that. And then yeah, it just really persisted into high school. Um, just again, you you couldn't go anywhere without hearing Paramore. Realistically, in high school, like that's it's like is graduating in 2016. Like one of their two of the biggest albums came out, and that's what was playing. You know, for all the different high school dances between. Yeah, between Brand New Eyes and they're self-titled, yeah. Okay, yeah. 20, 2007's when I, like, 2007 to 9 is when I heard of the band. Yep, and I mean, the thing is, a lot of stuff off of that Riot album was still being played religiously. Yes. In the high school setting in the 2010s. Yes. All right, what about you, Sam? I think I was either watching Fuse or MTV, MTV2 one day. And I just remember it was like, there's a rock band with a chick lead singer. 
Like, what is this? And that's where I was like, oh, never heard of them. And then, because that was 05, I graduated in 07. I was like, ooh, kind of different, kind of punk rockish, kind of get it. And then, yeah, the year I graduated in 07 was when Riot came out. I think I pretty much heard every time you like Bill C turned the radio on, you heard their songs. You from that album, Fuse, MTV, MTV2 played their stuff repeatedly and that's where i'm like oh five to seven is where i think they got their beginning and that's where they started to explode more into the scene and that's where i hear that's where i know of them from i'd like to quote chris rowe from the ataris which they're working on their first album in 18 years but and i quote the radio still sucks end of quote and i would also like to quote zach de la roca from Rage Against the Machine. Quote, Fear is your only God to the radio. Nah, fuck it. Turn it off. End quote. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm sure we're going to have a couple yeah. debates on this as we get to later albums. We are going to have some debates. Now, I, I, maybe maybe later is a better time to get into it, but for a for a band in the 2000s, female representation in the rock genre was lacking so i see the appeal of paramore they filled a gap they filled something that was empty they they basically picked up where avril lavigne left off no yeah but that's still shit like i mean that's but still it, not a good representation of no but that, that is what they especially initially what they were doing yeah it fills a gap so I get it. All right, let's just let's just get into the first record, 2005. All we know is falling, and hopefully we'll get. To, is it art? Because we did bring it back, but that's a good album art. I like that album cover. But we'll I get think into that. They said that couch is at Haley's house in Nashville, like somewhere in her house. It's still in the same still good standing like no tears or anything on it she just got it up there and nobody can go in her house and touch it so it's kind of a i mean i've gotten drunk on a couch in the woods you know like it, it's very nostalgia for me <laughs> <laughs> we've had some parties it on happens. couches like that yeah you know <laughs> we've all been there so bill why don't you start us off all we know is following 2005 when you were in yeah. second grade. Yep. So obviously, you know, being young, I didn't know that much, you know, about necessarily bands or stuff like that. So Hilly Williams, lead singer, without her, you really don't have Paramore, is reality. Was initially going to be a solo pop singer, but then she went and created Paramore at the ripe old age of 16, I believe. I know she wasn't 18 yet when they started. The word um, of the day is nepotism. The secret word is nepotism. You all remember what to do whenever anyone says a secret word, right? Scream! Right! For the rest of the day, whenever anyone says a secret word, scream real loud! Ready? Let's try her out. <laughs> oh, Jerry! Yes, Pee Wee? How do you like today's secret word? Ooh, I like nepotism. <laughs> Good screaming, everybody. Um, so yeah, this it was a uh, it was interesting because actually, I'll say this halfway through recording this album, the label actually said, "Eh, we should stop recording because all this sucks." Is what the label said, and then they got. Some other people in on writing some songs. Uh, most notably, Josh Faro, the guitarist, uh, really helped pull through. As yes, Haley Williams has songwriting credits on all of them, but also Faro has writing credits on all of these songs as well. And yeah, it's for a debut album. It's they're trying to be pop and punk at the same time. But also Malcor, but they don't want to be any of them. So they just kind of sat in the middle and existed on this album. Um, 
I mean, really, where you listen to it, like, my heart is the one's like, okay, like, starting to go a little bit more punk on that one. But then you've got, right before you got Franklin, it's like, okay, this is just a soft, you know, pop song occurring. Uh, for me, uh, probably the best songs on this album were Emergency, but not necessarily this version. I like it better on Summer Tick. Uh, Never Let This Go. And My Heart were probably my top songs. Pressure was the best biggest single i believe off of this album pressure was their debut single i think this you know next year will be 20 years since it got released so yes. pressure, the first big hit from this album yep which wasn't that big of a hit either like that was just the debut single kicking off the band i mean as far as debut albums go this one's a little bit flatter compared to some other bands that we've reviewed um, I know O Star is had a as a bonus track has had a bunch of re-recordings and demos and stuff released off of it. Potentially one of the better songs also that would have been on the album, but it just it's it's a debut album. Cool album art, even though I think that's a photographer sitting in the foreground that you see a shadow on the couch. Yeah. Uh, yep. Which is. The only knock I have against it, other than the sun's glare, is also kind of questionable, but 2005 photography, am I right? Yeah. It's... They go up from here on some future albums, but I will say they will also eventually regress lower than this in a future album as well. Sam, what you think of All We Know Is Falling? Uh, this is the debut album. So, obviously, I go into this going, it's debut album, no idea what to expect. Hashtag first album bias. You know, it's one of those, you know, like, let's see what we got here. They do have some good songs, like he said, like, Never Let's Go, and My Heart's obviously one of the big songs in that album. It was like, you, like they try to be punk rock, try to be pop. And it was like, this day and age, it works. But back then in 05, it didn't work. It was two totally different genres. So that's where like a lot of it's like, what are you trying to do? Hey, when you're singing, what direction you want to go into? You know, what guitar wrist you want to try to go with? And it's just, they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do, trying to figure out what direction we want to go. And it's a debut album. And you know, it was good for a debut album, but it was just... You know, obviously, as they got more and more, they matured more and more. But uh, other than that, it's a, you know, solid album. What do you think, Jason? So you got Haley, you got Josh and Zach, the brothers. You got Jason. And then you got Jeremy Davis, which was the bassist. But he left the band, like, right before this or during yeah. this. It, he was there for... Well, because that's the other thing. There was, on this one, there was four different producers. So he was there for the start, and then he, he was only there for track. He was he only existed for track five, which was Here We Go Again. Besides that, it was another basis. So he was there for one song, and that was it. Yeah, and, but they, they said this album was kind of about that, too. Lyrically... Thematically, it's about losing someone. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. Have you guys ever heard of a band called Saves the Day? No. Because no. Haley Williams, according to Wiki, has like sole writing credit for most of this record. And Haley Williams... Uh, it's, 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 her, it's her and Faro have joint writing credit. Well, they know who Saves the Day are because this record is Saves the Day. The opening line of this discography, as I usually do, is we tried so hard to understand, but we can't. We held the world out in our hands and you ran away. Zero out of five ranking. It doesn't rhyme or even make grammatical sense. It's awful, but the song itself is just saves the day. Speaking of saves the day, pressure. 
Every in emergency, I swear it was the same main riff as the opening track. I did like the slow, pretty parts, but eh. And brighter. I know she was like 17 when this came out, but she's not quite there vocally yet. I think she gets better vocally. Agreed. She's super flat on this record. Agreed. Uh, here we go again. So far, the highlight. It's not good, but it's not bad. It had some cool tempo changes. Never let this go. My 14-year-old daughter came out of her room when this song was on. And with a disgusted look on her face, she said, Why are you listening to Paramore? Whoa. Saves the day again. With a 17-year-old kid singing. This one was dumb. Conspiracy had a hum feel to it, which was kind of weird. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the band Hum. But Franklin was decent. In my heart, it's a closing track. Felt like a closing track, so no qualms there. I mean, they ended the album. It felt like a closing track. The production was fine, but this is 100% an industry plant. Like, it's 100% an industry plant. She was a solo artist already signed to Atlantic Records, and... She told Atlantic that she didn't want to be a solo artist. She wanted a band. And they said, okay. And they put together this band. And they said, you know what? For some street cred, let's not sign you to Atlantic. Let's sign you to Fueled by Ramen. Or Raymond or Ramen. Yeah, Fueled by Ramen. And, you know, go out, play some shows, build a fan base. You know, be cool and underground and get in with those punks. Because this is 2005, right? This is when American Idiot was already out. Um, Blink-182's Untitled was already out. Pop punk kind of had a resurgence in the mid-2000s. And Atlantic saw that and wanted to capitalize on it. And they're like, let's let's get you a pop punk thing going. Get you on a pop punk label which is owned by Atlantic, so it's still not really an independent label. If you look at that list of artists signed to uh, Fueled, it's it's all pretty bad. There's only one band on there I really like, and I, I recognize they are pop, and that's the Gym Class Heroes. I fucking love the Gym Class Heroes, but besides that, it's all like Fall Out Boy, just 2000s emo scene, whatever you want to call it. So it's an industry plant. On the radio, immediately, there's no street cred here. There's no punk at all. Like, this is a manufactured industry band. This is their self-titled. Does it sound good? Sure. It's produced well. It sounds like Saves the Day, which I guess we need to cover that band on this show because they have a couple great, amazing records. But music, yeah, musically, this is just Saves the Day with a girl singing. So... That's my thoughts on All We Know Is Falling. And I guess we're going to talk Summer Tick. This one wasn't on Spotify. Uh-uh. And I didn't care to go dig it up, so I don't. I didn't listen to any of this. Sounds yeah, like I needed not- to listen to O-Star, because Bill said that was a decent one. Yep, so I'll say this. Summer Tick, these four songs, pro- honestly, better than almost everything on their debut album um the emergency mix is better than what it was in all we know as well it's honestly for an ep it's actually a pretty decent ep um for paramore it's i mean they're doing they're just kind of it's a different take on the songs nothing super creative but it's just Emergency becomes a little bit, I don't want to say harder, but like more rock than pop from what it was initially sounding like, which might be more like Saves the Day based on what Jason's saying, which is what it is. Um, Yeah, this was actually a, that was a decent EP released for Paramore. What about you, Sam? Did you listen to the Summer Tick? No, like you, I went to Spotify and it was not on Spotify at all. So that's why I was like, I didn't see it on there. So 
Yeah, yeah, so yeah, this is the greatest EP ever released, you know. Like, th- this is the Paramore you all were missing. You need to listen to this album. Like, Darn. trust me. Top, I mean, I'll, there's one of these actually is going to be on my top song list. Okay. Damn, okay. We'll get to top songs. That's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. All right, so we don't rank the first one. It automatically goes into number one. But will it stay there? Time uh, will tell. Time will tell. You got to like and subscribe. Find, watch the next video to find out. The color code, we'll do that at the end. You got Ramon's Gold, which is a new color that was introduced last week. And, you know, then you got Nickelback Brown. So, which was introduced two months ago. Yeah. You know. So. We shall see where Paramore falls with a bunch yes. of. Is everybody here over the age of 30? Well, I guess Bill's not. Yeah. No. Well, I know I ain't. Me and Jason probably are. Okay. We'll see how a bunch of old guys rank Paramore records. Yeah. Happy Halloween, everyone. Mm. Be sure to like, subscribe, stick around. Um, we're talking Riot next, which that's the yes. one that I know the most about. So. What else we got? Give us a uh, check the links down below. We got a Discord if you're young and hip. We we live in all three of us live in Discord. Actually, we all met through Discord, which is kind of yeah. funny. Um, and if you're old, check us out on Facebook. We're at, we're active on Facebook as well, and Twitter. And if you're really old, check us out on MySpace. I bet Paramore was big on MySpace. MySpace was huge. And Probably. All oh, that would have been. MCR owned MySpace back in the day. Um, oh, yeah. And we are a playlist link channel. You can sort us by a playlist and see all the bands we've done and watch all these videos in a row. So there's that. Yada, yada, yada. Be safe. And make good decisions. <laughs>